Hello, welcome to the Thursday, September 5th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Brussels, Belgium. Brad wrote up another one of his real educational malware analysis posts. This time he's looking at the latest version of the encrypted resume mal spam that you may have seen in your inbox. These Word documents arrive encrypted. The body of the email will list the password as typical for this kind of malicious document. Now, the one sample that uh, Brad looked at, it ended up delivering the Remcos remote access Trojan. As usual, Pratt provides access to the samples and packet captures that he analyzed. So if you want to learn, if you want to redo some of the analysis, you have everything you need. And Checkpoint in a blog post disclosed an interesting weakness in many Android phones that can be used to send SMS messages with over-the-air provisioning data. Over-the-air provisioning is used by many carriers in order to supply mobile phones with basic configuration options, like for example, the APN settings, but also proxy IP addresses. A spoofed message being sent to a phone can then, for example, be used to change these proxy settings, which essentially would allow the attacker a man in the middle position. Particular vulnerable appear to be Samsung phones, which do accept unauthenticated over-the-air provisioning messages. So in this case, the only thing the attacker has to do is send a specifically formatted message to a phone as an SMS. In order to create the SMS message, the attacker needs a simple USB modem that allows them to send these binary SMS messages to the victim. Other phones use weak authentication, and in order to break this, the only thing the attacker needs is the phone's IMSI number, essentially the identifier for the phone. If that's not available, then the attacker can send a pin protected message to the phone with the settings. In this last scenario, of course, things get a little bit more complicated, but Checkpoint suggests that an attacker could first send a normal SMS message announcing the update, providing the pin to the user. Then the second message would include the update and the user would be prompted for the pin that was provided earlier. Now, the processing of these messages is not part of the basic Android operating system, which is why how they are processed and whether or not a phone is vulnerable depends on the particular phone manufacturer. The blog post also does not talk about iOS and if it may or may not be vulnerable to these type of attacks. And Cisco released a series of guides with details how to perform a forensics analysis on its devices. Cisco published four different guides, one for ASA, one for Firepower, and then one for iOS and iOS XE each. These devices go over how to, for example, verify the integrity of the firmware using hashes, how to read out log files, and how to create memory dumps from the device for future analysis. Instant response that involves these devices is always quite challenging because most standard tools don't quite apply. So pretty nice from Cisco to provide these step-by-step -step guides. Now, for a while now, we are dealing with a good number of CEO fraud email schemes, which usually involves an email claiming to come from a CEO or another high-ranking person in the company directing people to transfer money. 
Looks like uh, this CEO fraud just went a little further and is now using voice phone calls. Apparently a company in England uh, fell for this kind of scam. The phone call claimed to come from the German head office of this company. The recipient in England thought they recognized the voice of the CEO and followed the orders of this uh, supposed to be CEO and transferred money. Now I haven't uh, listened and haven't seen actually uh, any posting about the actual call itself. I'm not sure if it was recorded. It doesn't really sound like it. So I'm not really sure how good this particular impersonator was, but apparently it was good enough to fool this victim here who has talked to this CEO in the past and should be able to recognize the voice. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.